So we are now recording and moving to our, not the quiz. We want to go to the slides where we concluded by talking about economic equity. And this is uh, where the government's goal is to provide fairness in those three systems, producers, consumers, and workers workers who work for the business owners or the producers. So the next big um, section in our textbook, um, Monday was the government as a protector, a protector of economic interests, or I'm sorry, regulator, regulator. Um, Today's section is about the government being a promoter of economic interests. And then we're going to get into a second section on the uh, fiscal policy as an economic tool. Our, our textbook um, points out three large areas that the government promotes concerning its economic interests. And that is business, labor, and agriculture. And you will want to know these three areas of promotion, starting on page 458. And remember, this um, idea of the government regulating the economy and promoting economic interests and having a federal reserve that has monetary policy and the government having fiscal policy, this all falls under the statement in the Constitution that uh, it, the Constitution is in order to ensure domestic tranquility. That is, the government is to help our society be a peaceful one that is a prosperous one for domestic living. So the first area is the government is a promoter of business. Now, of course, this would include, this would include, excuse me, this would include government regulation. Now, while um, there are some, of course, some regulations that businesses don't like, for the most part, they, um, they uh, welcome regulation. And a lot, and sometimes the regulations will actually benefit the company to a greater degree. There are some regulations that they feel like will harm their interests, but the government is giving some regulation to businesses so that it will benefit um, that equity will come back in. It will benefit all parties. I would imagine in using a um, very relevant example 
that uh, with all of these vaping um, sicknesses, and then I think about 40, 40 people have now died because of vaping, I've never seen a vape or a jewel packaging. So, you know, um, don't know if there's a warning on there that says, you know, similar to, to a cigarette package, that this could be harmful to your health. I'm sure there is, but um, I would imagine that there are going to be some government committees investigating you know why are these things happening to so many people and uh, did did we miss something or did the and I'm assuming I'm assuming that it was government tested and then regulated originally did was something missed that is causing these people and especially a lot of teenagers to basically destroy their lungs. But you can see why uh, the regulation is not just for health purposes, but ideally for the vaping companies, they want to make money. And if your products are killing people, then you're not going to make money. So But now government just doesn't regulate businesses. They also provide loans. You can see here providing finance, which would include loans or tax incentives, tax breaks. So those are ways that they promote business. They promote development where there are no industries or if um, a, a large city or a large region of a state or an area that would, be, that would affect many states, a large, large region, uh, they might be one who promotes the development of industries in those areas. They create facilities for industrial growth and investment. So the government, it promotes business. On the top of page 460, our textbook mentions that the most significant contribution that the government makes to business is in the traditional services it provides, such as education. This is in the area of colleges and universities, which most of them are government funded, public universities. Along with education, uh, the government's involvement in transportation is a help to businesses. Businesses cannot function without interstates, without um, the, uh, for example, here in Oklahoma, the <clears throat> navigational system um, that goes all the way up to Catoosa. And uh, we saw back in the spring with all the rain the, the two barges that slammed into the dam those are barges that carry goods so waterways and then airports with um, travel services like fedex and ups these all contribute to businesses The, uh, you have any questions on that? The, the government promoting business. Yeah. 
and there is a uh, there is a agency that is kind of a, a monitor or a, a police type of agency over businesses called the Better Business Bureau, the BBB. And um, average citizens like us can, you know, if we purchase a product, that product that um, is is in poor condition or uh, we feel like it has contributed to health problems, we can uh, re report that to the Better Business Bureau, the business that, um, op the, the businesses that sell those types of things. All right, no questions on that. The next area that the government promotes is labor. We have a Department of Labor. Now, because we believe so much in the laissez-faire type of economic model, um, the uh, the rights of workers, the wages of workers, the amount of hours that workers would put in a week, there was no regulation on that. And business owners took advantage, not all of them, but many of them took advantage, <clears throat> took advantage of their employees. And the business owners would get filthy rich and they would uh, get away with paying employees very scant wages, working long hours, sometimes in very dangerous work environments. And so uh, these types of government involvement in labor really ramped up in the 1930s during the Great Depression. Be familiar with the National Labor Relations Act of 1935. It's pretty much right in the middle of your textbook on page 460. This act gave workers the right to be able to, uh, in a sense, have a union. They could bargain collectively and uh, businesses could not disrupt union activities. Businesses could not discriminate against those employees who are part of the union because being a part of the union is not a requirement. So this was something that the government, this act they, they passed in 1935 was to, uh, you know, protect those employees who did form unions, who did bargain as a group for better wages or for insurance or for shorter work days, protect them from being fired or being um, singled out and abused by businesses. What, what you have there with the government promoting labor is the, con the concept of democracy moving into the business place. Because democracy is to basically be um, the rule of the people and um, everyone has rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so some of those principles come over into the business world where business owners cannot be, for a better analogy, dictators. 
who basically exploit their workers. The workers must get a bigger piece of the pie, so to speak, better wages, insurance, while also working less hours each day and eventually the um, the concept of a work week was formed in which a work week was 40 hours a week, which would be eight hours a day for five days a week. And then the addition of things like overtime, if someone works over 40 hours for a company, then every hour over 40, they get overtime pay, which is usually time and a half. So if you're making $10 an hour, for example, you work 40 hours a week, that'd be $400 that you make before taxes. Let's say you put in 10 hours of overtime for a total of 50 hours. Well, those 10 extra hours, you would get paid $15 an hour instead of $10 an hour. That would be time and a half. So, and then um, holidays, if you worked on a federal holiday, I believe that was um, two times minimum wage or two times what you were making. So all of these things, these, these um, perks, not, not perks, but these um, laws that, these regulations that came in were to benefit the workers as well as the, and, you know, and not just the uh, business owners getting rich by completely abusing their workers. So government support for labor includes minimum wage, a maximum work hour guarantee. If for some reason you were to get injured on the job and you had to, or, or let's say you got uh, laid off. There's now unemployment, which is a government program. Supplies people with an income while they look for a job. Uh, and then of course, there's regulations so that the working conditions are safer. Uh, healthier. And then, of course, another regulation that our textbook mentions is that businesses cannot hire or fire based on discrimination. You, uh, you cannot only hire uh, certain types of individuals that you want you must be open to hiring the most qualified person, whether they're male, female, black, white, red, yellow, um, young, old, whatever it is, no discrimination in hiring. Those are many of the examples mentioned, but our, our government promotes labor. I might have had a slide for that. Let me check here. Yeah. <laughs> here at the bottom, you can see it says there's more than 180 federal laws and thousands of federal regulations concerning labor. And these are to help a workforce that has 10 million employers and 125 million employees.
Any questions? The third area is that the government uh, promotes agriculture. The government has been basically helping out farmers and um, those in other agricultural um, professions like ranchers for many, many years. Be familiar with another act on page 461, the Homestead Act of 1862, in which the government gave away 160 acres of farmland if a family would build a home on it and farm it for at least five years. So the uh, government has been in the promotion of agriculture for some time. The policy that they, the policies that they come up with are to help farming, agriculture, and food. Also to assist farmers and ranchers. It's to promote trade of agricultural goods, trade with other countries, to a work, uh, I'm sorry, to assure food safety. We, we definitely want that. We um, are grateful for President um, Teddy Roosevelt leading the way when they um, required meat packing companies to clean up their meat processing plant, uh, we, we would have been, we would be uh, very, we would get very sick, I think, if we saw how they processed meat in the early 1900s. So we're glad that uh, our government regulates companies to assure food safety also to protect natural resources and then to um, foster communities like Quentin and Panama and Arcoma, rural communities. And I can give you a very good example that we have had here. There is a food bank out of Tulsa, which I believe is the Eastern Oklahoma Food Bank Distribution. So it deals with um, probably, I'm going to guess, I-35, which runs north and south through Oklahoma City, from I-35 all the way east to the state line. And um, we have some people here in town who have a food bank and uh, they open their food bank every month. But once every three months, they have this food bank from Tulsa come down, the regional one, and they come down with a big truck and they have food that uh, maybe, you know, the expiration date was last week. They'll have bread that um, bread stores have to get rid of. And maybe it's just a day or two old, it's still good. Um, and so they'll come down and uh, so that's fostering rural communities, helping feed, you know, end the hunger. We do that here. Yeah, okay, very good. I, uh, I met with a lady a couple of weeks ago who is with the, um, I don't think it's DHS, but it might be. And uh, her goal is to help bring healthier foods to communities like Quentin. 
so she met with she's met with several leaders in the community she wanted to meet with some church leaders and school leaders and talk about how we can get healthier food choices because I don't know about you guys, but we, we don't have a grocery store anymore. We just have a Dollar General. And uh, you're pretty limited on groceries in Dollar General. You're not going to get fresh fruits and things like that. So that is part of the role of the government in agriculture. Any questions? All right, very quickly, I'm gonna cover these two things next. I am going to provide one of those wonderful PBS learning videos with Craig and his plastic eagle. It's about a nine minute video. So he can explain more about fiscal and monetary policy which is what we're going to look at now very quickly. It's covered on pages 461, basically through the end of the chapter. I will tell you that two of the economic theories on number two of the quiz are in this section. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but they're, in these sections. Basically, fiscal policy is the government trying to help the economy. That's kind of a very general definition. And there's two ways that the government can do this. One is to one is an expansionary fiscal policy, where the um, government cuts taxes, and then they also increase government spending. In other words, they're cutting taxes for the American citizens, so the citizens can keep more of their money, but then they're pumping more government money into the economy so that hopefully it will stimulate the economy. As more money is put into Americans' hands, then they will spend more money on more goods. That's the theory there. Let the people have more money in their hands and they'll have more discretionary spending funds and they'll go to the stores and buy more goods and that will be a meeting a demand. So, so this is sometimes called demand side economics. And if people are spending more money at the stores the store owners are getting more money and they can hire more people if they need to and that will help those people have an income. So that's the demand side economics in a nutshell. The other thing that uh, the other fiscal policy or the other, yeah, the other fiscal policy is contradictionary or con contractionary fiscal policy. This is where the um, government wants to slow the economic growth to counteract inflation. Now you'll need to know what inflation is. It's on page 469. But inflation is where the prices of our goods and services increase. Things like this. Um, a gallon of milk has gone up to $5 a gallon because of inflation, where it used to be $4 a gallon. Just, just, just an example. Uh, a loaf of bread is now $2.50 instead of $2. So 
inflation is a rise in the cost of our goods and services. So in order to stop the inflation or to slow it down, the government will raise taxes. They will decrease their government spending and the idea here is that hold on a second I might have those things reversed. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I was looking at something wrong, sorry. That's correct. Um, what should be more, what's more accurate is the government cuts the taxes on businesses and those that are uh, the uh, the um, uh, the upper class people with a lot of money, their taxes get cut, and what they will then do is the businesses will have more money to invest in production, then increase production will lead to job growth and increased consumer spending. This is called supply side economics, where they increase the supplies of the goods. And uh, this was employed by Reagan and Bush Sr. in the 80s and early 90s. But the common factor in both of these things is that it's the government that leads the way. Either cutting taxes, increasing government spending, or decreasing government spending. And you can see on the supply side, raising taxes, that would not be on the businesses, but that would be more on the middle Americans like you and I. And again, it's not a it's not a long term thing. It's something to basically counteract inflation. It can cause unemployment to increase. Monetary policy is another tool that can be used to stimulate the economy. But monetary policy is something that is done not by the government, but by the Federal Reserve Banking System. The Federal Reserve System was created in 1913 by the Federal Reserve Act. You'll want to know that act on page 467. It's basically a one big central bank and uh, this is monetary policy is basically where the Federal Reserve will control how much money is circulating in the economy. And so they have several different ways of influencing the economy by either shrinking the money supply or expanding it. So I'm not really an economist, so I'll leave that to Craig to explain it more fully. But when the feds are um, using their tools to try to stimulate the economy, they are wanting to either cause prices to stabilize, they are wanting uh, more people to be employed, 
They are wanting to see economic growth. They want to see a favorable balance of payments. But again, sometimes these things can be counteractive or conflicting. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something that I, sounds particularly appealing to me. Some of you might want to be an economist, I don't know, but this slide here shows kind of the difference. Monetary policy is where banks are working to improve the economy. Fiscal policy is where the government is doing so. So any questions there? So watch Craig and you can watch and see if he punches the eagle again and learn about fiscal and monetary policy. Those of you that are on the quiz bowl, you'll be ready to go. Well, I didn't leave much time for class projects. So um, do any of you have questions about what you talked about Monday? My goal today and tomorrow is to email all of you some information that will help you in your specific area, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I emailed you and told you what our, um, what the... Yeah, I have everything here. I have the proposed okay. bill. I believe that's from, um, was that from the Senate committee or the House committee? The house. And I emailed you and I told you what we talked about Monday. Was that Haley? Yeah. I, I needed your committee to send me the copy of their proposed bill for We're Monday. Michaela sent it. Okay, okay, I need, okay, so the Senate, you're working on it, right? Hi. You have a new committee, the Senate has a new committee. Yeah. You, okay. Any other questions, though? When do you want, to see, when do you want the Senate to email you our bill? Um, if you could do it before Friday's class, that'd be good. Okay. And then remember, Executive Branch, you have a press conference on Monday. But I will be sending you some stuff that hopefully will help you. All right, have a wonderful November 13 and 14. Thank you. Sir, you too. Thank you.